In GLP-1 News today, we're diving into groundbreaking research that reveals an unexpected twist in how weight loss drugs Ozempic and Wagovi function. It turns out these popular medications might do more than just suppress your appetite. They could also be enhancing your metabolism. Stay tuned as we explore how this new understanding could revolutionize the treatment of obesity. Welcome to the Downsize News. Today is Monday, August 26th, and we're excited to bring you the latest updates and insights on GLP-1 medications. I'm Lorraine Durham, and I've lost over 50 pounds on compounded trisepatide, which is also known as Zepbound and Manjaro. Hi, I'm Christopher. Today we'll discuss everything you need to know about GLP-1s, including Manjaro, Zepbound, Wagovi, Ozempic, Terzepatide, Semaglutide, and a whole bunch more. Before we dive in, just a quick reminder, we're not doctors. While we're passionate about GLP-1s and weight loss, it's important to consult a qualified healthcare professional before starting any weight loss medication or treatment. So let's jump into today's news and explore what's new in the world of GLP-1s. In story number one, a new study reveals that weight loss drugs like Ozempic, Wagovi, and Manjaro may directly impact metabolism, not just appetite, as previously thought. These medications, known as glucogen-like peptide 1, GLP-1, analogs, were initially believed to work by promoting feelings of fullness, leading to reduced food intake. However, recent clinical trial results uh, suggest that the effects are more complex. The study, led by Professor Donal O'Shea from St. Vincent's University Hospital and UCD School of Medicine, found that participants who took uh, GLP-1 daily for 24 weeks experienced weight loss and increased metabolic activity. The more weight participants lost, the more their metabolism seemed to be boosted. Interestingly, those with lower metabolic rates at the start of the trial benefited the most from the treatment. The study's findings were published in the Journal of Obesity Society. Professor O'Shea explained that the study challenges the oversimplified view that these medications may merely reduce appetite. He emphasized that understanding how these drugs enhance metabolism is a significant step in treating obesity. The findings also provide science to support the treatment of obesity. It's not simply to eat less and move more. That's the prevention piece. The treatment is more complex than that, stated. So what do you think of this? I'm interested to know, well, did my metabolism increase? Because I know when you weigh less, you can eat less calories to maintain your weight. A heavy person might need... 2,000 calories to maintain, whereas I think now my basal metabolic rate is around 14, 1,500 calories mm -hmm. to maintain. So there must be weight. some formula for metabolism that's energy burned, weight, all of that stuff that gets to BMR. And yeah, but that's great news if this stuff can also rev up your metabolism while you're losing weight. Who it wouldn't helps want you that? burn more, burn more efficiently. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a downside there. Yeah. For sure. Next up, story number two in the booming world of GLP-1 drugs. Ozempic is still sitting pretty at the top, but how long can it hold the crown? With the anti-obesity drug market potentially reaching a staggering $100 billion in the next year, it's no wonder that healthcare giants like Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk are fiercely competing to dominate this space. And we've seen it over and over again in stories. These two companies have been rivals for decades, and their GLP-1 drugs continue to capture headlines. The race is heating up like never before. It's a lot of what we talk about it's in the news on this billions channel, right? Of dollars, yeah. Billions and billions. So let's talk about the numbers as of the last quarter. Novo Nordisk, so Zempic, technically approved for diabetes, but widely celebrated for its weight loss effects raked in a whopping $4.2 billion with a solid 30% growth rate. Not far behind, Wagovi, another Novo Nordisk star with the same active ingredient semaglutide, pulled in $1.7 billion with a 53% growth rate. That's crazy. Staggering, isn't it? But the real jaw dropper is Eli Lilly's Manjaro, which saw a mind blowing 215% growth, bringing in $3.1 billion. And then there's Zepbound, Eli Lilly's new kid on the block, which we, of course, know is terzepatide. It's the same drug, simply uh, approved for obesity. It's already making $1.2 billion in sales. And that's just since December? Yeah, I think late November. It, but, it, yeah. it just came out. Mm -hmm. Like, it hasn't even been out for a year, mm -hmm. and the sales are $1.2 on Zepbound. 
And so while Ozempic currently leads the pack, Eli Lilly might soon steal the spotlight. The GLP-1 drugs, Monjaro and Zepbound, aren't just holding their own. They're excelling in clinical trials. Terzepatide, the powerhouse behind uh, Monjaro and Zepbound, showed it could help people lose nearly 27% of their body weight over 84 27%. weeks. Compared to semaglutide, Ozempic, and Wagovi's active ingredient, they posted a 15% average weight loss over 68 weeks. And the studies are a little bit weird and off. So a lot of people will tell you that they, depending on your metabolism and what's going on in your gut, you can get similar results. But the research is pretty clear. Well, this, this research says that people on Zebbound and Manjaro 27% of their body weight. Yeah, the problem with those two studies is they weren't conducted exactly the same way. So there's different dosing patterns and there's different lengths. So, But 27% on trisepatide yeah. versus 15% on semaglutide. Yeah. I mean, I think I think we can all agree that trisepatide trumps semaglutide. I think for most people you're probably right. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd love to see a study where they did them at the time, same time with the same number of people the same way, a similar dosing strategy. Well, you can't even use the same. I mean, it's not like you can use the same study on the same people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could you conduct can, the study at the same time. You could do a placebo. A Zep but I'm just then. saying, you know, thinking about how everybody responds differently mm -hmm. to the medications, maybe somebody's going to naturally respond better to semaglutide or trisepatide. You can't test both things on the same person. Right. But if you had a large enough sample, it wouldn't matter. That's true. <laughs> so That's true. if you had 100,000 people or 10,000 yeah. people or whatever, yeah. it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Those things would even out. So with those kinds of results and Monjo and Zepbound's meteoric rise, Eli Lilly is more likely to dethrone Ozempic and their GLP-1 drugs gain traction and, and production ramps up. The battle for the top spot in the GLP-1 market is far from over, and it'll be fascinating to see who comes out on top. So will it be Ozempic and, and Team Novo Nordisk or Team Eli Lilly or Team to be named later? <laughs> Player yet to be named. Well, I mean, think about it. Yeah. Microsoft Word won everything, but do you remember Word Perfect? <laughs> uh, I do, actually. <laughs> exactly. So it's not... One thing that also occurs to me on this study is on a lot of the boards on Reddit and all, a lot of the mm -hmm. threads that I read, people are always saying, weight loss people, stop taking the drugs away from diabetics who need it. And they've separated it. So mm -hmm. Eli Lilly makes Manjaro, which is now pretty much just as prescribed for diabetes, type 2. And then there's Zepbound, which is only for obesity. Correct? Correct. And then under semaglutide, Nova Nordisk is only making, or is making Ozempic, which is primarily for type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. But then they made Wagovi, same exact thing, mm -hmm. just for weight loss. Well, sort of. So remember, they're both rapidly testing for all kinds of other things for those drugs. They could be prescribed So there's for other, other indications. There's other comorbidities. But if these drugs that have been just marketed for weight loss are now in the billions of dollars, mm -hmm. and the... The originals, Ozempic and Manjaro, are still making billions of dollars. I don't think anybody's taking anything away well, from anybody anymore. I think the problem is we need to reframe the conversation. So it's not about blaming me because I took your medication. It's about blaming the manufacturer for not, not keeping up enough. with demand. Yeah, and because are yeah. they probably both being made in the same factory and it's just a different label? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably are. Mm -hmm. There's probably not a... Manjaro factory and a Zep bound factory. Yeah. I've never been in them. I don't yeah. actually know, but same medication, same pen. Same, right. it, they're exactly the same, except this a different says Zep bound. Label. This says Manjaro. This still yeah. Zep bound. So it's literally the same medication. So. But it's up to the manufacturer to keep up. And they haven't been. No. And they're making billions, and they're spending billions on new factories. So this is just going to explode in the yep. next few years. Like absolutely. It, there won't be any reason to complain. And who knows? Maybe one of the other players take them all out in a couple of years. So. Maybe. Mm -hmm. All right, next story. Uh, and our next story, a recent study on semaglutide and suicidal ideation spurs debate over data validity. A recent study published in the Journal of American Medical Association, or JAMA, indicated a potential increase in suicidal ideation among users of semaglutide popular GLP-1 used in weight loss treatments such as Wagovi and Ozempic, and this has drawn significant attention. However, Dr. Neris Asbury, a senior research in diet and obesity at the University of Oxford, 
urges caution in interpreting these results due to the inherent limitations of the data used. The study reports that semaglutide users are 1.45 times more likely to experience suicidal ideation than users of other drugs, a rate that increases to 4.45 times among those who also use antidepressants. Despite these concerning statistics, Asbury points out that the study's reliance on a database of reported adverse drug reactions does not provide a comprehensive view of all semaglutide users, only those who have reported issues. This raises questions about the prevalence and causality of the observed effects. The number of suicidal ideation adverse drug reactions, or ADRs, reported is relatively low at 94 explains Dr. Astbury, highlighting the rarity of these reports in the context of the broader user base. Furthermore, while 63% of these reactions reportedly subside after discontinuation of the drug, the persistence of symptoms in 37% of cases suggests a complex relationship between the drug and the adverse effects, possibly indicating that the drug itself might not directly cause them. While the findings prompt a necessary call for further research and caution, they also reflect the challenges of conclusively linking specific drugs to adverse mental health outcomes based on observational data alone. Dr. Asbury advises that anyone considering GLP-1 agonists for weight loss should do so under close medical supervision, mindful of the potential side effects. This call for a measured approach emphasizes the complexity of assessing drug safety, particularly in treatments affecting metabolic and neurological pathways, and reinforces the importance of comprehensive post-marketing surveillance to safeguard public health. So very medical and all of that, very complicated, but basically a set of research was done looking at reported side effects. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, judging a product based off of the Amazon reviews and then, and, and we all know people only complain, right? <clears throat> yeah. You, and, only, you only see the adverse. And this doctor points out that 94 reports were made. Yeah. And they don't even tell you out of the total, but we assume based off the last story of the billions <laughs> of dollars sold. So a small percentage of people could, I guess this is suicidal ideation. Is that suicidal thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thoughts. Suicidal thoughts. Yeah. If you're taking one of these GLP-1 medications and you have suicidal thoughts, I would immediately let your doctor know and see if you can adjust your medication. That's the bottom line. Or I, I would let your doctor know and talk to them about appropriate treatment. So I don't, don't assume it's your medication. I mean, I always say don't walk into a doctor with the solution. If you walk into a doctor oh, with true. the solution, you might get the solution you asked for and it might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Walk into the doctor with a problem, explain the problem, and let them be doctors. All right. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> I don't have to solve their problems for them? No. Well, they went to school. That's the whole idea. Now, if you don't feel like you're getting the solution that you need and it's mm -hmm. not working for you, that's why there's other doctors. This is true. Yeah, that's why they're second opinions, but let them be doctors. And again, if you're having issues like that, please get help. I wouldn't be alarmed by this study. The sample that is so small that the numbers aren't compelling. Story number four in a promising development for obesity treatment, Palatin Technologies, Inc. has begun dosing the first patient in a phase two clinical trial, exploring the effectiveness of combining Bremenlanotide with terzepatide, a GLP-1 GIP therapy. This trial, titled BMT-801, aims to assess the safety, tolerability, and effectiveness of this combination in treating obesity. Palatin's president and CEO, Dr. Carl Spana, expressed excitement about the trial, emphasizing the importance of developing multiple therapeutic options to manage and maintain weight loss effectively. He highlighted the melanocortin-4 receptor, MCR4 pathway, crucial in regulating energy storage and food intake as a promising target for future combination therapies. The trial aims to determine whether the synergistic effects of MCR4 agonists combined with terzepatide could lead to more significant weight loss at lower, better tolerable doses. The study plans to enroll up to 60 patients across four U.S. sites. After an initial four-week treatment with terzepatide alone, eligible patients will be randomized into one of four treatment regimens. The trial will involve comprehensive assessments to 
evaluate the safety and effectiveness of the new drug, but as a standalone treatment and in conjunction with GLP-1 and GIP therapy. Full patient enrollment is expected by the third quarter of 2024 with initial data anticipated in the first half of 2025. This study could pave the way for new, more effective obesity treatments by targeting the MCR4 pathway alongside existing GLP-1 therapies. So another player jumping in the game. Another medication. that Eli might... Lilly and Novo Nordisk can just feel them nipping at their heels. Whether these guys are big enough to actually produce in volume or not, or they just end up getting acquired by one of the other big players. So you know, this, this is a drug that combines with trisepatide mm-hmm. to work differently on your receptors? Yeah, this like MCR4, MCR4 pathway. pathway. Basically, all, right. <laughs> all of this gut health, there's so much chemistry yeah. going on, and it's sending so many signals mm-hmm. they're trying to talk to a different one. All right. It's pretty cool. So just to give you a little more on that MCR4 pathway, it's been identified as a key player in appetite regulation with genetic mutations affecting this pathway linked to early onset obesity by mm-hmm. activating the MCR4 compounds like bromlanotide could enhance satiety and improve weight loss outcomes when combined with GLP-1 GIP therapies like trisepatide, the trial could be a significant step in developing more comprehensive obesity treatments. I think all these are fascinating, so we'll see what happens. There's just so many things in the pipeline. We hope you found the updates helpful and insightful as you navigate your own GLP-1 journey. Please make sure to like and subscribe to The Downsized. Absolutely. Always consult with your healthcare provider before making any decisions about your treatment. You can also check out our Downsized store at thedownsized.org, where you can find GLP-1 companion products and other resources. And you can watch us live with our show, The Downsized Live, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, where we take questions from our viewers and connect with our fantastic community. But before we go, we want to invite you to join our Downsized YouTube membership. All the content you love, our weekly weigh-ins, news updates, tips, and insights will continue to be free. But by becoming a member, you'll get even more out of your GLP-1 journey. With perks like loyalty badges, early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and even personal coaching sessions, it's a great way to support us while enjoying extra benefits. So click that Join button to check it out and see all the details and become an official part of the Downsize family. We'd love to have you with us on this adventure. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, we hope you'll watch our other videos for more GLP-1 tips and interviews. See you next time. I'm Christopher Durham. I'm Lorraine Durham. And we're the Downsized.